Well, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed all the talk so far. I'm Lizzie Salida, and I am excited to share with you all how Booz Allen Hamilton has navigated cultural tensions on our journey towards inner sourcing. So I'd like to start by taking you back in time to 1914, when our company was founded by Edwin Booz, and he pioneered the new field of management consulting. Um, as the company grew, Booz Allen helped government and business leaders solve some of the United States' greatest challenges. A couple of fun facts, Booz Allen consultant Keith Oliver invented and coined the term for supply chain management. And also, if you watch the Super Bowl this season, uh, Booz Allen helped broker the merger between the American and National Football Leagues that makes the Super Bowl, Bowl possible. Today, we have expertise in cyber digital solutions, and we're also the leading provider of AI solutions to the U.S. federal government. So we have this amazing 110-year legacy of management consulting, and in the past few decades have undergone a major transformation to a technology company, and in the past few years have hit a tipping point where over Third, over half of our 35,000 person workforce is technical. So developer culture has popped up in different pockets of the firm in service of different clients and different missions. And my role within the CTO is helping to figure out how open source principles and developer experience relates to the ways we've been working and our core values to lead us through this transition and into the future. So how did I get here? I started at Booz Allen as a junior software engineer, and one of my first big projects was working on a website called usaspending.gov. In short, this is a public-facing site that shows a breakdown of where U.S. tax dollars go. And in the spirit of transparency, the code powering that site is open source. So it was kind of thrilling and kind of scary that every pull request and bug that I wrote was out there for anyone to find. Um, but that was a really formative experience for me. And then I started working on some of the first inner source projects at Booz Allen and learning about developer relations. So I was working on building community and developers would get really excited about what we had. Um, but it real we realized that there weren't always the right incentives in place for their participation in InnerSource for some reasons I'll talk about next. Um, fast forward, those InnerSource um, software accelerators became some of the first components in our internal developer portal. And now I'm currently serving as the product owner for our internal developer portal. So a little bit about uh, that, it's been in production for about two years and is built using Backstage. We have a combination of community plugins, custom built plugins, and we're also leveraging a Spotify commercial plugin. And our initial focus was really on just breaking down program silos and figuring out what was available to be shared um, company-wide and um, one of the goals for Backstage is for it to be the entry point to discover intersourced solutions from around the company. Um, it's also been a proving ground for understanding how intersource can help our clients. And we quickly realized that intersource is crucial to the success of the developer portal because in order for solutions there to be valuable, they need to be relevant, useful, and well-maintained and, and open to feedback um, from the people who are using them. So we started with a handful of developers who were really passionate about the solution. And since then, we've grown to a community of over 2,000 unique users. So we still have a lot of room to grow, but we've learned a lot of lessons along the way, and hopefully some of those resonate with you all. So through talking to developers and user testing for the developer portal, it was hard not to notice that some of the challenges to inner source were not necessarily technical, but cultural. And there are these tensions between um, how we operate and in a lot of cases, what makes Booz Allen a trusted government partner. And on the other side, open source and tech culture. 
Um, so for example, the need to know mindset when handling classified information versus the transparency of open source, we absolutely have to handle classified information with the utmost care as uh, government consultants, but there are also some internal research um, and investment type projects that benefit from more open collaboration. As consultants, we also adhere to a strict time charging policy to make sure we're accountable to our clients, whereas a lot of innovation and in open source happens through developers volunteering their time. There's a lot of hierarchy within government and corporations, which is often necessary to how decisions are made versus the meritocracy, um, where it doesn't really matter who you are. What matters is the code that you write um, in open source culture. And then we also just have a lot of layers of policy and legislation that have built up over time, whereas tech culture tends to be much more agile and lean. So one side isn't inherently better or worse than the other. It's about recognizing scenarios in which it benefits both us and our clients to apply different ways of thinking and working. So I'm sure you can think of some similar tensions that may exist within your organization. So we realized that navigating these challenges was a change management problem. Uh, the ideas of and our sourcing and self-service are aligned with our core value of collective ingenuity, but putting them into practice is a bit countercultural. Um, the change that we're trying to create, which will be familiar to many of you, is um, for people to register inner sourced code and make it discoverable in the dev portal, adopt inner sourced accelerators so that they can save time and improve quality and security. And finally, um, we want developers to contribute back to the inner source projects that they've adopted. So we realized we would have to come full circle and think like consultants to apply change management model that's been really helpful for me is the ADKAR for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. So we want to communicate the change we're trying to create sympathize with people's concerns, provide training and resources so that people can implement the change and measure success. And then finally, we want this to become a habit over time because the right incentives and reinforcements are in place. So there have been a couple of initiatives at Booz Allen that have been really helpful in navigating those cultural tensions and applying the ADCAR change management model uh, due to the hierarchy of our organization, we realized we would need both a top-down approach to garner leadership buy-in, as well as a bottoms-up approach to get more grassroots adoption from developers themselves. So the first top-down approach is Booz Allen's overall reuse strategy. This involves not just the reuse of code, but also of business assets like agile processes and templates. And this allows us to leverage AI internally for knowledge management and even generative AI based on vetted and governed sources of information. So how does this help us apply ADCAR? Um, for awareness, this has allowed us to connect inner sourcing to something bigger since this is a strategic priority for the company. It's also helped create that desire because there are success stories and examples that everyone can relate to, um, even if they're not familiar with code reuse or inner sourcing. And then it's also kind of forced us to document our guiding principles. And we actually came up with a process for how to tag and uh, register something as reusable within the company-wide ecosystem. And that includes the developer portal catalog, um, which has a lot of documentation about inner sourcing um, as a requirement for registering something as reusable there. And then it's also just given us the opportunity to be in conversations with a lot of different departments throughout the company, from legal to talent development and employee engagement, um, and to garner leadership buy-in so that as developers, 
see opportunities for reuse and inner sourcing, they'll be met with understanding from their leaders. And we don't have an inner source program office officially. So our team that's kind of like a software engineering center of excellence has been driving a lot of these conversations and integrations. And then finally for reinforcement, this is where we have a lot of room to grow, but ultimately we want to be able to demonstrate the return on investment of inner sourcing and a streamlined developer experience. The second bottoms up approach is our technical experience groups or TXGs. These are company sponsored member led communities that provide networking and career development opportunities. And these are kind of like special interest groups. They include employees from all different projects serving all different clients. And that's really important because as consultants, we're very embedded in our projects and our client missions, and the TXGs give employees the opportunity to connect with their Booz Allen colleagues over a shared interest in technology. So there are eight different higher level topic areas, including cyber, data science, software engineering, and each of those have smaller sub-communities, and there are over 15,000 employees who are members. So how does this help with ADCAR? Uh, we've been able to advertise a number of inner source projects and opportunities through various events and newsletters that the TXGs put on. They've also been helpful in identifying champions. So for those inner source software accelerators I talked about earlier, um, some of them were scaffolds for specific frameworks like React or Java Spring Boot. And so we were able to tap into the TXGs to form advisory boards by recruiting subject matter experts to inform the technical direction of those projects. And then for knowledge, we've been able to partner with the TXGs uh, recently to work on some new hire onboarding training that includes sharing with new hires some of the inner source projects that are available through the developer portal. Uh, and then for Ability, they've been a great source of alpha testers and user experience feedback. And then finally, for reinforcement, the TXGs have been um, a source of funding for inner source projects. And similar to the um, group support pattern, they've also been a landing place for inner source projects when a core team was no longer able to support. And they've also, um, through some internal award programs, been able to help us recognize and reward contributors and champions for inner source projects as well. So in conclusion, uh, listen to developers to understand the cultural tensions that might exist within your organization. Try to find or create groups like the TXGs that will give you a diversity of perspectives. And second, find your allies. This could be other groups across your company who are working on par in parallel on similar changes. And I'll leave you all with my favorite definition for the role of developer experience, which is to represent your company to developers and developers to your company. And I believe InnerSource has an important part in that conversation. Thank you all and happy to take some questions.